Hey everyone, and welcome to the OT Unleashed podcast. I'm your host, Eric Johnson, and I'm pretty excited to be chatting with you guys today. I know it's been a minute since our last podcast, but we got a few coming out pretty soon. But today I want to do a special one um, specifically about Memorial Day. Memorial Day today. Um, it's a big deal for me uh, for a lot of different reasons. Um, I think that one of the things that I want to kind of chat about is a little bit about how I see Memorial Day, some of my takes on kind of what's going on with uh, our world, um, and just honoring a couple of the guys that really meant a whole lot to me that I lost in my time in the service. Um, so first thing I just wanted to say is one, I hope you guys had a great weekend. I hope today was meaningful to you. And and if you're listening to this podcast from outside the United States, which I do have quite a bit of um, different foreign countries listen to the podcast. But if you're listening to this from the other countries, today we celebrate uh, Memorial Day in the United States. Um, and it's a day that we look back and honor the sacrifices of those who gave the ultimate sacrifice. Um, they decided to volunteer for um, their country and and they they died um, and our country is where it's at because of those men and women who did make those sacrifices and so today I just really wanted to chat a little bit about that um, it means a whole lot to me you know it's really interesting um, it was an interesting day for me specifically you know I woke up and my very first thought was Raymond Alcaraz, uh, and uh, Ray is a uh, you know one of my buddies who uh, I served with in Afghanistan, and he he died uh, very close to the time he was supposed to go home. Um, we had become friends over the course of the deployment, um, and uh, and let me just tell you a little bit about that that time. Um, but I'm not going to talk about it right this moment. Um, but Ray Alcaraz was the first person I thought about, um, Sergeant Ray Alcaraz. Um, and, and Ray, uh, incredible, incredible guy. Um, but Memorial Day, so I woke up. Um, my first thought was I want to mow the lawn. <laughs> uh, I needed some time to myself. And when I mow the lawn, it's nice because nobody bothers me for the most part. I can put in my headphones and just kind of be in my my own headspace um, and and I started to mow uh, and I realized that the grass was very wet and I wasn't going to be able to do it so so that quickly evolved into me jumping in the pool with my son with my son Fox and um, and my sister and her husband had just gotten home from a vacation and they joined us and for the next couple hours we just spent some time in the pool and it was great um, I get pretty emotional on days like this because I think about, you know, the, the fact that I can jump in my pool, the fact that I have a pool, the fact that I ha live in a place that my family can live across the street and jump in the pool with me. Um, you know, we're free here and, and I'm so thankful for that. Um, and I feel safe, you know, I feel safe in America and I know a lot of people um, don't feel that way, but I feel safe. And I also um, in a space where I think about those people that are thinking about their family members who pa passed away, um, the, the ones that didn't come home. And I don't think, I think about the ones that didn't come home, but I think about their family so much and, um, and what this day means for them as compared to Veterans Day for us. Um, and so I think, thought about that quite a bit. Um, ended up having an impromptu little kind of uh, grill uh, party and we had some burgers and it was really nice um, and uh, got to spend some time with my family. Um, and then later on, I got to, I got to mow. Um, and it's very cathartic for me. I like getting out and kind of shaping the earth and my, my own little piece of the earth. Um, and uh, it meant a lot. And, and I wasn't planning on doing this podcast. And then all of a sudden I decided that today, uh, as I was mowing, I was like, I, I want to record a podcast. I want to talk about Memorial Day a little bit. So here I am. But um, but more Memorial Day, um, a lot of people, you know, there's a lot of people that are out there that want to speak for veterans or people 
or maybe even some veterans that say, you know, like, oh, you know, don't celebrate, you know, like this should be a time for, you know, barbecues and everything like that. But no, 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 it is a time. It's a time to celebrate. You know, our freedom was built on today. Um, and, and so I want to celebrate that. Um, now I want to think about those people. I want to think about those people who died. Um, and I want to celebrate that our freedom was built on that sacrifice. Um, and so I think it's okay. And I think if you are out there, if you're listening to this and you are celebrating, you absolutely should be celebrating, you know, and, uh, and I'm glad that you did enjoy today, but I do ask you to think about it, you know, like, why do I get to celebrate today? Why, why is it a, a space where we get to, um, take a day off, think about these things, you know, because there, there was sacrifice involved. So first things first, I just want to say celebrate today. You know, I, I don't want this debate today to be dreary, you know, have a drink, um, buy a drink for somebody that's never going to drink it. Maybe it's a family member who you lost or somebody that you know, a friend. Um, I talk about mental health quite a bit. I'll probably do some solo podcasts about mental health with veterans and whatnot. Um, but one of the biggest things that I say is veteran mental health is kind of based on people supporting you. You know, there's programs, all kinds of things out there. But really, at the end of the day, we survive and we treat our mental health because the people around us love us and they inform us that uh, of that. And that could be in little ways. Like for me, I have some friends that will shoot me Star Wars you know, uh, memes, or maybe somebody, one of my good friends uh, who's in Cali, she's a Dodgers fan, so she'll send me Dodgers memes or something exciting happens, and we'll chat about that. Um, and things like that really help me. Uh, but days like this, it really means a lot to me when people reach out. Um, people say something to me, you know, like, hey, I'm just thinking about you today. I know that you lost someone, and uh, I want you to know that I'm thinking about you. That means a whole lot to me. Um, what's crazy though um, is out of, I think I counted it up, I have about 2,500 Facebook friends and, you know, I don't know, 2,000 plus Instagram followers, 2,000 plus Twitter follow, follow, or X followers. Um, but out of those 6,000 plus people that in, engage with me on social media, four people said something to me today. And and I'm okay. It's okay. For me, it's fine, you know, but, uh, um, but I was kind of surprised and I've said this before, you know, I'm surprised when people don't reach out to veterans more, you know, when, when, when veteran mental health is such an issue, then why don't they have more support from the humans in their life? I have 6,000 and, you know, there's probably some crossovers, but let's just say like I have a three or 4,000 social media humans, you know, and, and four humans reached out to me today and just said, Hey, thinking about you, um, you know, and, uh, and, you know, thank you for your service. And, and, and I'll say this, a lot of people will say, oh, don't thank veterans for their service on Memorial Day. That's about the people who died. Not thank veterans for their service. That's fine. You know, because chances are a veteran that you think for their service probably lost somebody, you know. And the people that said thank you today, I know that they know that I've lost people. And, and that's huge for me, you know. So, so thank a veteran. That's okay. And, um, and I just wanted to say, like, you know, like, I, I encourage you to, to, to reach out to those humans and just say, hey, you know, I love you. I know that you went through a lot. And I know that was hard. And I, and I know that you probably lost some people. And I know that was hard. And, uh, and I just want to say thank you for that. So Memorial Day, I just want to encourage you to do those things, right? So enjoy the day. Um, think of veteran. I think that's important. Um, but I want to talk to you about two people. Um, on Memorial Day that were important to me. Um, very, very important to me. And one that you don't know, and I'm going to talk about him first. Uh, this guy's name was Major Daniel Holland. Uh, a lot of you didn't know that when I was first in the Army, I enlisted when I was 19, um, and I was an animal care specialist or a vet tech, right? So I took care of a lot of military working dogs and different types of animals and whatnot. Um, I was stationed in Germany right away, and uh, while I was there, one of the officers who took me under their wing, his name was uh, Dan Daniel Holland, Major Holland, and I loved him. He was such a good dude, and he really looked out for me. Um, you know, early in my 
um, assignment over there. I was burned, and I talked to you guys about that a bit, but I was burned, and he really stepped up to the plate to, to, to take care of my family, um, to take care of me, take care of my family, make sure everything was happening. Um, and I, I really appreciate him, him and uh, um, another young woman named Melissa Diaz. And uh, she's not Diaz anymore. She's married. Um, but Melissa and Daniel Holland were huge for me. Um, years later, I would find out that Daniel Holland was the first veterinarian that was, oh, Dan, uh, Major Holland was a veterinarian. But years later, I found out that he died. He, he died in war. Um, and that really kind of hit me. I found out, crazy enough, I found out at the Army Medical uh, Center and School Museum um, on Fort Sam Houston, Texas. Uh, I was just looking through all the exhibits and I went to the veterinarian one and I saw that there was a special award for Major Daniel Holland that had paid the ultimate sacrifice. And, um, you know, and that was really tough. Uh, but Major Holland, uh, thank you you know, for, for your service. Um, he was over actually doing a, uh, a veterinary mission that was more for uh, sanitation and making sure there was vaccinations and, um, and preventing disease. Um, and so that was a lot of what veterinarians did over there. And so um, that was big, right? Thank you for your service, Major Daniel Holland. Um, thank you. Um, and some of you guys know the story of Ray, uh, Ray Alcaraz. Now, Ray and I had a little bit tighter of a relationship. Um, I deployed to Afghanistan, actually went in December of 2009, um, did a pre-deployment site survey, ended up going um, there for the, in the full uh, deployment in January of 2010. And we were a tight little team. Um, our uh, Charlie Med, um, we were tight. A lot of good guys, a lot of good gals. Um, I became really close with a lot of those people. Um, Teresa Timms was my battle buddy. She's amazing. Um, and, um, and, and she and I were mom and dad. That's uh, kind of what everybody called us because we were both captains and uh, all our Joes, um, you know, we kind of like <laughs> corral um and of course our first sergeant commander of course they were in charge but we were mom and dad right i was ot she's a nurse kind of made sense right um got very close with them and one thing that you don't understand about i think people that are deployed um is that so life isn't necessarily easy but it's pretty simple uh, life is simple and uh you know what you're going to be doing each day for the most part and um, you know, you get up very early, you work till very late, and then you go to bed and you rinse and repeat. Uh, there's nowhere, there's not a lot, you know, a lot of choices are taken from you. Like, you don't have to like, where am I going to go to lunch today? Like, if there's a DFAC in a dining facility, right? You go to the dining facility. Um, you know, there's shoddy to no internet. So it's not a whole lot that you're doing there. Um, because you're working all day. You know, there's not a lot of downtime stuff that you're working on either. You know, you just are doing your job. Um, and whether that's kind of prepping for something that might happen or maybe somebody was hit. Um, some of you guys don't know I was the actually the first occupational therapist to deploy with a brigade combat team, which is a big deal, right? So that was really close to the fight. Um, so all those guys that I worked with were actually going out and boots on ground. Um, and I went out with uh, a couple times with uh, some of the um, the engineer teams and whatnot. Um, but uh, but one uh, one of the things that was so remarkably interesting to me is that when we spent so much time together and people talk about brothers in arms, sisters in arms, um, it's true. Like we 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 literally became family. Um, for better or for worse, of course, we had a, we bickered, we argued. Um, the first sergeant and I hated each other, and now we're very close friends um, after the after the fact. Uh, story for a different time, but um, uh, so here's the the different thing about family uh, in arms versus family blood, um, and that is that uh, you know if you're home, you know with your wife and kids or your 
husband and kids or just your 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 partner whatever um typically one of you or both of you are going to go do some work somewhere at some point right so you you'll probably spend eight to nine hours a day away from each other it's a good chance right and then you come home you hang out you got two or three hours together you know maybe four or five you know uh get crazy go to bed at 12. and then all of a sudden uh next thing you know uh you wake up rinse and repeat right yeah the weekends but you know when we were in afghanistan like we were literally together all the time you know we you know like i, I remember 4 a.m 5 a.m wake-ups you know and we would work until um you know 9 10 p.m you know and uh and guess who we were with and there was nowhere to go so it's not like oh man i was going to go out to the club tonight or hey i was going to go catch a movie like there's none of that right like if you wanted to play video games is with your guys right there uh, if you wanted to play cards, it was right there with your guys. If you wanted to, like, hang out, it was right there with your guys. And we would just be in the aid station or, you know, just like a common area tent or something like that. But we'd always be together. Always be together. Um, deployment rolled around. Um, we became very close. Uh, a lot of our medics who were really incredible um, our medics were trained very well to save lives. They're very good at what they do. Um, matter of fact, our medics were more intelligent, better equipped than a lot of the doctors in Afghanistan. And so oftentimes they would train the medical personnel in villages across Afghanistan. They were that good. Um, we got really good at saving lives. But we're rolling through the deployment and we get into August um, and next thing you know, um, Ray Alcaraz, who was such a good dude, so kind, he was so positive, nice, everybody loved this guy, he was good, he was an incredible medic, just all around great dude. Um, and we became very close. There's videos of us together. There's pictures. We have all kinds of stuff. Uh, there's a lot of jokes. We, we, we did all kinds of fun stuff together, like all of us, you know. Um, and Ray and I became pretty close. Um, and August comes around. We are all pretty much back from our we have like a, a a break in the middle of our tour where we can go home for a little bit and then we come back but everybody had pretty much come you know uh come back and uh and ray was on his last kind of cycle of missions uh, a new unit was coming in and they were going to replace the 173rd um uh airborne brigade combat team and um ray was going out on his last few missions and um and um he um and um he, a couple days before he went on this mission uh i had talked about doing a photo shoot with him i was like hey man let's do some really cool pictures <laughs> uh <laughs> uh photo shoot and and i'll pop them up here you guys will see some pictures um let's do a cool night photo shoot of you guys doing night off stuff, you know, something really cool, you know, and, um, and, and, uh, you know, he loved his really pearly white teeth. We always joked about that with him. And so we were, uh, we did this photo shoot of him, uh, about to go, you know, about to go out on mission. And I want to say this two or three days before, um, he, he was killed. And, um, we had a good time. It was funny. He loved them, loved the pictures. And, uh, and I remember talking about, uh, mild traumatic brain injury. He had joked around with me. He's like, Hey, so if I say, if, if we, if somebody got hit by, you know, an IED and, you know, I got my brain rattled, like I could get a purple heart or something. Right. And I joked around. I was like, well, technically if you are injured, you're eligible for a purple heart. Yes. Um, you know, but you'd have to have probably some significant injuries. Like I would, I would be surprised if, uh, just a concussion injury would get a problem. Anyway, all that to say, uh, August 31st, 2010, August 31st, 2010, um, I get a, 
um, Sergeant Dixon, um, Sergeant Dixon, he was a occupational therapy assistant who was um, working with me in the brain injury clinic. Uh, he, he comes in and he says, hey, sir, uh, your boy uh, Alcaraz was hit. Um, he's going to be coming down to the Charlie Med. And I didn't know much. And I actually kind of laughed because I was like, Oh, this is great because we just talked about this purple heart situation um, and I'm going to razz him about it. It's like, hey, you know, you got like photophobia or like are you got unequal pupils or, you know, are you irritable? Things like that. Right. Um, so I casually put put my uniform on, kind of got everything together and decided I would go down to the Charlie Med to check out what was going on. And as soon as I left the MTBI tent, I realized something was horribly wrong. Way worse than I thought it was going to be. You know, there's no cell phones. Like, nobody's texting me like, hey, man, get down here. Something's going down. And uh, and so uh, so I, I was kind of thrown back. Um, and, uh, and as I kind of was looking around, I just saw hundreds of Joes. Uh, and something was wrong and as i got to the charlie med 10 i realized very quickly that we had some casualties some people died and then i find out that ray was being medifact in because he was still alive and so i was very thankful at the time like okay ray's alive um i didn't know the other guys um uh, george and atkinson and and those guys i didn't know them personally but i but ray obviously i knew and uh and there was hundreds of guys there from because units across the forward operating base were coming in to donate blood whatever they could do to try to save some lives right and uh and i realized pretty quickly like this is pretty this is a lot more serious than i thought it was and then i thought you know what it's okay because ray's alive and we have an incredible forward surgical team they're going to take care of him they're going to take care of him and it's going to be okay. I mean, if he loses his legs, it's going to be okay. If he lost an arm, whatever, like it's going to be fine because, you know, like I work at Walter Reed. I work with amputees all the time. I mean, shoot, after the deployment, I'm going back to Walter Reed. I'm going to just be able to hang out with Ray the whole time. I'm going to teach him prosthetics and then we're going to have a good old jolly old time. We talked about going to Vegas and having a good old time there. We're just going to have to do with prosthetics. It's fine. He's going to be fine. Um, and, and, uh, one of the things that was really, really hard for me is that, uh, so I'm an occupational therapist and, and as an OT, I don't have a really critical role during acute injuries. Um, I would help with triaging, pulling pe people off of, um, the birds, um, when you, you pull people off the, the birds that were injured. But, um, once that is done, I'm kind of just like, Hey, uh, you know, like if you need me, yeah, I'm an extra pair of hands. Um, Ray gets there. He is in the tent with the surgeons, um, incredible surgeons. Um, some of my, you know, best friends to today, you know, and, um, and a lot of the guys, the OR techs, the uh, the assistants, the medics, um, everybody was going everywhere. And there was, um, you know, people had jobs doing x-rays, people had jobs pulling labs, you know, doing everything that a Charlie Med did. And I didn't have a job. And I remember just sat it, sitting there like outside of the OR tent, the, um, the FST, Forward Surgical Team's tent and just looking at it and and waiting for anybody to come out so I could see like how it's going how's it going and we're a family right and um so people would come out and they'd be like you okay you okay and it's like yeah I'm okay okay like how's Ray and he's fighting you know he's fighting he's 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 okay um he's he's fighting you know he's fighting and I kept thinking like okay at this point in time like I feel like we should be okay um uh, and, um, and it's a little fuzzy, <laughs> but I remember thinking a lot of things. Like, uh, I thought I was thinking about his mom, 
Scott's dad. Um, I thought about like I'm a photographer and my camera was literally in ca at Canon's facility um, being fixed because it got broken while I was over there and, and I didn't have my camera to capture these moments because I wanted to take pictures to show how much love was pouring into these men. And um, in my memory, we got mortared. <laughs> Uh, we took IDF, uh, indirect fire on the fob. And when that happens, you have to go into a bunker. And you go into a bunker um, because it's possible that you could get more incoming fire. And I just remember being so messed up at this point. You know, and at this point, it's been a long time and I'm I'm really messed up. I'm waiting to hear anything. And uh, we get out of the bunkers and all clear sounded. And uh, um, and then I hear we lost him. And um, it was really hard. And um, I remember the chaplain. Um, he came up and he, he grabbed me and he held me and he said, uh, you have to make it worth it. And I collapsed and he held me and um, it was really hard. Um, and I cried and I cried and I cried and I, I didn't know what to do. Um, and everybody was crying, we were all crying. And it was really hard, really hard. Um, and I remember going back to my, my TBI tent with my buddy, John Lesher physical therapist and uh and we decided to have a beer uh there's no real beer over there but we had like near beers like heineken's and uh and cigars and we decided that maybe that's how we would grieve right now because that's all we could do and um and we were there for a minute and uh then um they were, what happens when that when somebody dies is they they prep the body for their their hero flight and their hero flight you get on that bird um well i'll tell you about that in a minute but but the the the, the surgical team was cleaning ever cleaning up ray and and all that stuff at the time and then all, um then i got message that if we wanted to see him now was the time and everybody else had pretty much gone through and i was I didn't know what to do. Um, I'd seen a lot of kind of carnage at that point through the deployment, a lot of blood, a lot of carnage. Like it was, it was, it was chaos, but it wasn't my friend. And, um, and I remember going through those, those same doors that I was waiting outside of for this fourth surgical team. I remember opening the doors and then Ray's body was there on a litter and um and i collapsed and uh, i fell to the ground and i i wept and um this beautiful man sergeant anderson like came and grabbed me and and he held me he picked me up he said it's okay sir it's okay i got you and um and uh and he took me over he sat me down he said when you're ready go, go see him and ray was there and and i go and i look at him and and you know he looked at peace you know he was he was just ray only thing that was a little bit different it was a little cut on his chin and i touched his chest and he was warm and um and i cried and i i thanked him and i i uh, i spent some time with him for a minute and um then i joked with him and People had left different things on his chest, uh, you know, coins and uh, trinkets. Some somebody put like a, you know, some <laughs> the 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 whitening strips. Um, and I wrote on a a dollar bill. Just uh, all his debts were paid for me because he owed me some uh, some stuff. <laughs> I put a dollar bill on his chest. And that was the last time I saw him. And uh, Ray, I, um, and then the hero flight, right? So four guys died in that. Um, it was an IED blast, uh, improvised explosive device. It hit one of our vehicles. Three guys died pretty much right away. Ray was alive for a bit. 
And um, the hero flight is interesting. So what happens with the hero flight is uh, they have one flight out from 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 your unit, um, and it goes off with a helicopter. There's usually two birds. You always have a chase bird. Um, and they loaded the guys. Some of the medics were, uh, you know, for lack of a better term, the pallbearers, people holding the, the litters, taking them to the, to the helicopters. And, uh, and, uh, you know, we're, and what you do is you stand at the position of attention or you stand at the position of uh, parade rest. And, and I'll show you, this is kind of what happens. Um, you'll be at the position of parade rest. And then as the heroes come down the flight line, you stand at the position of attention and then you render their, the last hand salute. And I'll show you what that looks like. And the whole flight line does that. Um, and it's very emotional. Um, the chaplain's there, he talked to you guys and, uh, and you jump, uh, and, and the funny thing is, is that uh, the guys almost dropped Ray getting on the bird, which was just kind of a funny story because Ray would have laughed at that. Um, but business as usual, you have to keep going. Um, there's a lot of things that happen right after that. There's a lot of grief counseling. There's a lot of um, traumatic event management um, teams, mental health teams that are helping us um, process all this stuff. And um, and one of the last things that happened is that the the units hold a a final roll call and a goodbye and a salute to the fallen he to the fallen heroes and. Um, And what happens is everybody's in there and then they, they do a roll call. Sergeant Lamana, here for a sergeant. Sergeant Smith, here for a sergeant. Sar First Sergeant Brooks, here for a sergeant. And then they'll say, Sergeant Raymond, Al Sergeant Alcaraz. Sergeant Raymond Alcaraz, and it's silent crickets right and we're all sobbing and they're like sergeant raymond alcaraz and uh and then they do a a, a gun salute um and it's super emotional it's very emotional for me now uh, but but they do a tribute you can see some of the pictures from the tribute and and that day that we did the tribute, a bunch of our guys, you know, we're more in mourning together. We're talking about the good times. We're laughing together. And this picture, this picture, um, not this one, this one, this one, this picture right here. This picture is probably one of my favorite pictures that I've ever had from Afghanistan. And that picture was a picture of us right after that event. Um, and it means a whole lot to me, but I got to, I got to visit Ray's parents after that. Um, I had a lot of media of their son. I got to share a lot of stuff with them that I had accumulated over the years or over the time being with him. And, um, and I gave him every single picture. I realized that, I got to spend the last moments with their son and I, and I, and, and they, and I got to put some puzzle pieces together for them. You know, what was he doing? Like, was he happy? Um, you know, I had pictures of us playing baseball in Afghanistan, just throwing the ball around, you know, um, there's a video on, on this channel that, that you can watch of us doing a video, like, a you know, like a, a lip sync, you know, to the, the killers, Mr. Brightside, <laughs> and uh, 
And I got to share that with them, which was really powerful. And I got to, to visit Ray at his grave site. You know, some pictures here you can see. And, um, and I got to say goodbye then. And, um, and that was pretty powerful. And to the day, it's hard, man. You know, I, I, I miss him. I wish I could grass him. I wish I could joke with him. And there's a bunch of dudes on in my life that I'm so thankful for. And, and, and really, I can't thank him enough for going out and taking care of people. And, and, and by doing that, he died. Died helping. And I think there's a lot to say about that. So, um, you guys, that's all I have. Um, love those veterans, you know, ask them the stories. Like, tell me more about that guy that died. That you know. Your friends, the, the people that, that you lost. It's not easy coming home, y'all. It's It's tough. It's tough to see so many Americans so angry at America. I wish that you could see the chaos that's in the world firsthand. I really do. Happy Memorial Day to you guys. I love you. To my brothers and sisters, Godspeed.